Hi, I'm Frank Pettiflew from Omega Sonics, and I'm going to be talking today about our line of ultrasonic equipment for the fire department industry. We have two basic machines. We have the FSC Pro. FSC stands for Fire Service Equipment. And then we also have a larger unit called the FSC Pro Plus. The FSC Pro is a 60-gallon tank. The FSC Pro Plus is an 86-gallon tank. And the very first thing we do when setting up the bath is to fill the water to the midpoint of this spray bar. So on this machine, again, the midpoint gets you 60 gallons. The next step we're going to do is add the proper amount of soap. So we have the product called the Omega AquaClean LPH. This is NFPA 1851 certified, and it dilutes at a 30 to one ratio. So we will do this. We will actually add two gallons of this product. Again, it's a 60 gallon volume. 30 to 1 ratio, that means 2 gallons. Very first thing is we open the cap. We're going to remove the protective foil seal. And then we will pour the soap into the tank. And then we'll do this one more time. The next thing we want to do is set our temperature for our equipment properly. So to set the temperature, we have a display, a two-level two display. The upper level tells me the actual bath temperature. The bottom display in green is the set point temperature. For PPE gear, we're generally cleaning somewhere between 120 and 130 degrees Fahrenheit. The way I can adjust the temperature up or down is I hit the either the low, the lower uh, key or the uh, upper key, the raised key, up or down, and you'll notice that the light flickers. And what that means is it's not technically set into memory. So once I hit the return key, and this looks like the return key on your keyboard on your computer, once I hit that return key, you'll notice that flickering stops, I get a solid green. So right now, I'm set, I've set this machine up to run at 126 Fahrenheit, but my actual bath temperature is only 118. That does not mean I can't actually start using the machine now. So if my set point temperature or my bath temperature is below where I want it to be, I may just need to run it a little longer. So time and temperature in ultrasonics are inversely proportional. The next thing we're, we're going to do is we're going to set our timer based on what we're cleaning. So if I'm cleaning, say, an SCBA mask, I might run a three to five minute cycle. If I'm cleaning a helmet, I might be running about a five minute cycle. If I'm cleaning a, a cylinder, probably about a 10 minute cycle. Uh, if I'm doing an SCBA uh, pack, that's gonna be a 10 to 15 minute cycle. Again, the dirtier the, dirtier the item, the longer I need the, the time cycle to be. The cleaner, if I'm doing more regular maintenance, I'm going to run a shorter cycle. So the way I'm going to set that is we've got four blue buttons. So the button on the very right-hand side changes our seconds. The button to the left of that changes tens of seconds. To the left of that is minutes. And to the left of that is tens of minutes. So I'm going to set this up for 10 seconds, and then we're going to operate the ultrasound so you can see the automatic operation. So I'm going to set this right now. So we are at now 10 seconds. And what we do in this market is we have made uh, the key switch to run the ultrasonics keyed. And we do that so that only authorized users within the fire department, within your fire station, can actually use this machine. Anybody can set the temperature. Anybody can turn on the pump to filter. But only authorized users can operate the ultrasonics. And it's very simple. You take the key, you insert the key, turn it to the on position, and you'll hear the ultrasound come on, and it will run for 10 seconds and then turn off automatically. And right at 10 seconds, the, uh, the machine stops. The other thing that we can control is the pump. So we have a pump with an on-off switch. The pump's purpose is simply to take water and fluid out of the tank, 
run it through two, a two-stage filter, and then spray the water back into that spray bar. That's where we fill the water up to. And we are going to run that periodically. We don't run it every day. We don't run it after every cleaning. We run it if you, say, clean gear in the morning. I'd run the filtration for about 30 minutes. And if you don't clean gear for another three, four days, no, there's no need to run the filtration system. After you clean a certain amount of gear, the water's going to turn black. That's OK. We care about pH more than we care about the color of the water. So that is why what we'll do when we set up the machine initially is we're going to take a pH meter, which comes with your set, your kit. You'll turn on, you'll turn on the pH meter. You'll get a pH reading. You'll place the pH meter into the tank for about 15 to 20 seconds, and you'll wait for the numbers to stabilize, and you'll take a reading of that, of that pH. So I'm reading right now 10.1. So what that means is my water is at 10.1 is pH. I would say monitor it once a week. When you see that number drop a half a point, so in this case it would drop to 9.6, that would be an indication to either drain the tank or to maybe add maybe another gallon of soap. The filtration, again, is extending the life of the bath. This is not meant to be dumped after every cleaning. This is meant to be in operation for a month or several months, again, depending on the usage, how heavy the uh, contaminants are, and, um, and it's, so it's going to vary from state firehouse to firehouse. And the next step would then be to you load parts or you load your, your gear into different baskets. So we have two sizes of baskets. We have our basic basket nine, which is a 16 by 20 inch, deep, 20 inch basket, six inch deep. And then we have the same size, but it's double the depth. So this is a 12-inch basket. So depending on what I'm cleaning will dictate what basket I'm using. So if I'm cleaning helmets, I would use a deep basket, and I would use it with this lid. So the lid basically clips onto the basket and clamps down so that my helmet doesn't float. Same thing with my cylinder. They're both going to float up. So I'm trying to keep them self-contained within the basket. If I'm doing things like axes, they can basically lay in the basket. An axe is going to sink straight to the bottom. No need for a lid. Uh, masks tend to sink as well. But you could, just for, uh, for precaution, just put, uh, put the mask into, again, either the short or the tall, bas or tall basket. And you can use the lid or you cannot use the lid. That's really your discretion. The only thing you want to use the lid, again, is the cylinder and the helmets. They will absolutely float. You can also clean flashlights, again, as long as they're sealed. If they're not sealed, do not clean them. You can use them, the ultrasonic unit to clean nozzles, uh, hoses, pretty much anything you use in your, uh, in your firefighting uh, applications can be put through the ultrasonic unit. If you run a cycle and you take the item out and you say, well, I'm not quite happy with the cleanliness of this, run another cycle. There's really nothing here that's going to be harmed by running multiple cycles. We're using water-based soaps and, and uh, water, and it's a heated bath. So there's really nothing bad that's going to happen to this mask if I run it multiple cycles. To learn how to clean your specific PPE gear, continue watching our additional videos on our website.